Well, the Whedon Brook contains a property, Barrimal Stud, it's called, and it's been the home of some of the world's best thoroughbreds for 150 years. And I said to Jerry, when I started here 15 years ago, I'll build you a world's best property. And I've put a lot of effort into doing this. And of course, we've had a drought, then a major fire, and then a flood. And this area conducted itself in a way that the ancient landscape had previously done. And now we're watching the plants take over. And once they do that, we really can just coast with the management because the plants do 90% of the work. So I have a lot of trouble when I'm asked, where is the economics of this? And we never mention the simplest thing. Everything that's life-giving is a result of plants packaging sunlight. My name is Peter Andrews. I've spent a lifetime recognising that this was a unique landscape. And when I first started in this endeavour, I was at Bylong, which was a sister property to this, just 20 k's over the valley. And there was the best equine athletes in Australia, and in fact, probably on the planet. The specific things that are able to be seen here, the Wollombi Pines, not that far distant from here, and when you've got sandstone cliffs for 30 and 40 miles, not just kilometres, the water roars out of them, you've got a huge catchment with very little moderation of the flow. And certainly the quality of fertility has the very worst potential because it can't come out of sandstone rocks. They don't produce fertility. So my belief was, surely, if we could repair these catchments under the worst conditions, so could the rest of the world. The miracle of it all is, which is so visible, so easy for somebody to walk about here and me show them the good and the bad and the ugly as I could do in every else in the country. And from a world perspective, it doesn't matter whether we're in Namibia or the top of the Colorado or wherever. There's a connection people understand. We're sitting pretty close to where the cliffs come out onto the floodplain, which they've developed from here down. We're looking at this particular structure, which was put in about 12 years ago. It's a contour that stretched from one side of the valley to the other. And in fact, this was filled up with sediments as our valleys previously did. And then the plants managed the sediment, living compounds and all of the fertility. And you know, you would think the Murray River and the Darling River were slightly different to this little stream, but they're not. The principles that run them are the same. This whole continent is the flattest, the largest, has the least number of climate backups, yet it still evolved the singing birds, the flowering plants, and two thirds of the fish species, and the most balanced climate on the planet under the worst conditions. That's where we should start. How does it do that? How does the climate work? How does it maintain water management in the landscape? How does an unlimited flood work without damaging things? But even after that, the relationships between what this plant does and that plant and this plant and all the other things, there's 50 different opinions and most of them don't follow the rules that I can see in this landscape. There are scientific terms that relate to the way this landscape works which are fully relevant. One is field capacity. If you can have water sitting up there where the water's going into the soil, and a whole new range of plants can live where it's coming out. It's the highest level of productivity. The plants can draw up the water they need, photosynthesize, everything comes into balance, and it could be shown to support every form of agriculture, including the most healthy individuals, such as the fastest and the best horses. It should be significant to anybody else if they wanted to understand how it works. In my lifetime, I've watched systems recover from desertification and then I've watched it recover from total saturation and that is not in the science today. It's only because of this old landscape that I've been able to understand it enough to see it and then to teach people how to use it and that in fact it's possible for every person growing a plant to contribute to the result that this landscape had automatically achieved. Mm -hmm.